Hey guys, we're here with Steve, uh, the author of the Nefarious Plot book that the idea from the book is now has turned into a movie. And Steve, hello. Hey brother, good, good to be here. Thank you for having me. Really appreciate it. I'm used to being the host. I almost said, good to have you with us. It's your show, not mine. <laughs> Sorry about that. Go ahead. Well, uh, I'm very honored that you agreed. I know you're very busy, especially with the release of the movie and your book and um, the podcast that you have that is very successful as well as your social media platform. So I'm really glad that you took some time to uh, share. Could we start from the beginning first? So I watched the film yesterday. Mm -hmm. Love the film. Um, mm. I mean, it was one of those uh, not Christian type films. So mm -hmm. it got straight to the point. It was brutal. It was straightforward. And I love the fact that it did not have a typical Christian ending. Mm -hmm. um, I almost felt like it was a screw tape by uh, C.S. Lewis, but on steroids. It's yep. like on yep. this like gospel according to a demon. That's really kind of yep. how I would uh, name it. And actually brought a scripture to my mind from Judges chapter 7, where God tells Gideon to go to the enemy's camp and to hear what the enemy has to say. And afterwards, mm -hmm. God says, your hands will be strengthened. You know, because a lot of people would listen to stuff like that and say, well, you know, what are you trying to learn from a demon, really? Um, but before we talk about the movie, could we could we go into um, how you wrote the book? What got you to write the book about the nefarious uh, plot, plot? So I was um, I went my first ever trip to Washington D.C. Mm -hmm. was for my first book uh, of wide release, and I'm in the shower getting ready to go do um, some uh, some PR stuff, and in the back of my head, this pop out of nowhere, this pops into the back of my head. This book is dedicated to all the useful idiots out there, especially those of you who had no idea you were being used all this time, for you proved to be the most useful idiots of them all, nefarious. And I thought, that's weird, you know? And I went and did my, you know, I kind of um, commiserated on it for a while, went and did my appointments. I get back to my room later that night, and I, I just sit down and start playing around with this idea and where it may have came from. And I realized you mentioned screw tape letters. Mm -hmm. and. You know, I, I had written a grand total of one book, Vlad, so let me go ahead and see if I can write a sequel to C.S. Lewis's momentous work. Why not, right? Uh, and uh, I, I thought, what if we took the screw tape letters and mm -hmm. any sequel, the threat's got to be bigger than it was in the original, right? Mm -hmm. And so in the original, it's about the temptation of us as individuals. What if yes. we went after an entire culture? Mm -hmm. And and so I created this character, or at least it was given to me, Lord Nefarious, a high lord of hell who was tasked by Satan with the destruction of the United States of America over a century ago. And in this book, he lays out point by point his plan. He names names. He connects dots. Real movements, real people are named in this book. Mm -hmm. Okay. And he, and he connects dots and he walks us through his plan, but he doesn't do it kind of in the handlebar mustache villain. Mm -hmm. Now that you're captured, let me tell you my plan. Mm -hmm. No, it is. He needs to convince his master, the devil, that the plan has worked. And so the way to do that is to put it in our faces and rub our noses in it. And the fact we will not repent, we won't turn away, we won't think it's a conspiracy theory, that our hearts are so hardened, we'll be turned off to the evil he has done. That's how he'll convince his master, the devil, that his plan has been successful, it's irreversible, and that America is essentially primed for the next stage of the enemy's global dominionist plan. And and that's how the, the book ends, you know, it mm -hmm. ends that way. And uh, I, I wrote the book. My show was very new at the time. And uh, it was a modest success. It sold several thousand copies, but nothing great. And I thought, hey, you know, I'll move on to the next chapter of my life. And then one day I get a phone call from uh, the great radio host, Glenn Beck, whom at the time I did not know. Mm -hmm. And he asked me, hey, a, a mutual friend of ours gave me your book, man. And it blew my mind. I want to have you on my show. And he had me on a show to talk about it. And, and that morning, uh, Chris Jones from a new company called Believe Entertainment. They had uh, him and Carrie Solomon and Chuck Consulman had been the script writers for Pure Flix. They had mm -hmm. written a big hit, you know, their biggest hit, God's Not Dead. Mm -hmm. They were going to go out on their own and form their own production company. They had already determined their first movie was going to be Abby Johnson's memoir, Unplanned, about mm -hmm. her time at Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. And so they were wondering what their next movie was going to be. And they always wanted to do real spiritual warfare. Carrie and Chuck got saved about 40 years ago 
during the charismatic Catholic revivals of the 70s. Mm -hmm. And and so they've always been interested in this topic, but how to do it in a way that doesn't glorify it, but warns about it at the same time, you know? Uh And they heard me talking about it, Chris did on the the show. He goes and gets the book, reads it. He's blown away by how good he thinks it is. And Carrie and Chuck read it that day as well. And that night I'm down here in this man cave. My wife is at a women's retreat. And uh, this was eight years ago. Uh, and uh, he, I get this email saying, hey, we want to buy the movie rights to your book, man. And I, I thought it was a Nigerian prince scam. So I just deleted the email and went back to playing John Madden football. <laughs> and uh, it turns out and then the little that little voice in the back of my head again said, ah, you might want to double check that. I think you might be wrong. And turns out they were real. They were legit. And now actually it was seven years ago, not eight. So uh-huh. seven years ago is when we signed that movie deal. And now uh-huh. here we are. We're going to release in theaters nationwide on April the 14th. Mm-hmm. The movie is the prequel to the book. As you know, from seeing the book, yeah. the movie, it leads up to the publishing of the book. Where did this demonic ma- uh-huh. story, this manuscript come from? And uh, I won't say any more to spoil it, but uh, uh, you can watch all our trailers and everything at whoisnefarious.com. Mm-hmm. and purchase tickets there we find out if it's, uh, it's going to be at a theater in your area around the country and uh, we're very excited by how it turned out that we've done screenings all over the country the reaction has been overwhelming i think part of it is because it's very subversive you think it is something based on the trailers and it is not what you think it is Mm-mm. you know you mentioned um the, the a scripture about learning from the enemy jesus said the children of men are smarter than the children of light and uh-huh. and what the children of men have done for decades in hollywood is they have made content, Vlad, that assaults our worldview, but because it entertains us, we let them do it. Yeah. We tried to turn that paradigm back on them. Come on. We tried to make a movie that looks and sounds like a modern thriller, like a, a Silence of the Lambs or a Seven, mm-hmm. or a, that kind of a thriller horror movie. Mm-hmm. It looks and sounds like that, but you know from seeing the movie, that is not the worldview of the film. It mm-hmm. will put our worldview fully on display. And so our hope is that, that we made a quality enough production that unbelievers will allow us to now influence their worldview via cinema the way they have done it to us. Mm-hmm. And um, when, when I watched the the premiere, the, the producers, the, those that you just mentioned, I love the fact, because in the beginning, I'm not going to lie to you, when I saw the trailer, um, somebody sent, sent me the trailer and I was like, oh my mm-hmm. God. And I don't like horror films. I was like, I, mm-hmm. I'm like, this stuff is like Hollywood trying to, I actually thought it was a Hollywood production of uh, trying to, you know, like do some kind of a demonic thing. And so, mm-hmm. and then I saw Mark Driscoll on Twitter pretty much saying, hey, I watched the preview and uh, p- the premiere and he's like, hey, it's one of the most theologically sound uh, films. And then uh, another friend of mine, Greg Log, he also actually sent a group text message to the, the uh, we call them Demon Slayers, um, also saying, hey, I watched <laughs> the film, love the film. And, mm-hmm. and I'm also a part of the film that was just released called come out in jesus name that deals with spiritual warfare too and so so it got my got me excited i was like man i want to see this this is definitely not what the poster looks like because poster is like (laughs) that thing Mm -hmm. is scary and then when i watched the interview of the producers and the writers were talking about how they designed the film for non-christians even though it has a christian theological framework behind it could you speak a little bit more into why it was on purpose made like that um, so that they could bait non-christians even though you are encouraging Christians to go and see it. The the film, listen, I, I did a special sneak peek at our church last night. I wouldn't put the poster, which I had a heavy-handed designing myself, <laughs> I wouldn't put it in the lobby of my own church, okay? <laughs> but but we did this marketing. We're trying to go to Nineveh with this film. Mm. And, and to put it bluntly, there is a line that when a culture crosses it, it doesn't return. Mm-hmm. And you get into Romans one judgment kind of stuff, and mm. and 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 brother, our feet, our toes are at the are, are at the lip of that line right now. Yeah. And as a culture, the United States is like checking the wind. Maybe the, the breeze is nice. Let me dip a toe in the water. I don't know. Maybe it's okay. Mm-hmm. We're about to belly flop into that mouth of madness. And I I just think for the last and, and all of us do um, mm-hmm. it, that every one of us that were a part of this movie think that we have. We have shown for the last 30, 40 years, they've seen all our all the Hawaiian shirts. They've seen all the sweater vests. They've seen all our pleated khaki pants. They've seen all our slam and praise teams. They've seen us be real nice. And it didn't put a dent in the demonic influence of this culture. And at some point, we've just got to be real. Do, do you understand that you're not smart? You didn't figure out something new. That you're not you're not smart you're 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 not smarter than your creator, mm-hmm. and that if we make decisions that you are poised to make, we are, this is from darkness. We, we this is a point of no return, 
And so we thought, let's let's give him some old time religion. Let, let's 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 give him some Jonathan Edwards. Let's let's grab the culture by the proverbial throat. Mm-hmm. And so that's why we put a secular atheist in this room mm-hmm. with this demon. He walks in there. He is representative of current contemporary American culture. I'm educated. I'm enlightened. Mm-hmm. I'm smart. I've got all the answers. I'm the people you've been waiting for. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm your expert. Hand your life over to me and let me guide you. And he's going to meet his dark Yoda, so to speak. He's going to he's going to get the, the wrong kind of Padawan training. He is going to learn mm-hmm. where every bright idea he thinks he once had truly comes from. Mm-hmm. And over the course of this movie, that knowledge will wreck him. And that's our hope is that you can take your unbelieving friends and family members. We made this movie. We marketed it subversively. Show them the trailer. Let them look at, oh, that's cool. That's dope. That looks like something I want to see. You're right. You should go see it. All right. And let us now do the heavy lifting. We'll slap them around a little bit, metaphorically speaking. Mm-hmm. Right. We'll, 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 we'll deliver the bad news so that after the movie now, you take them out to coffee, to ice cream, to pizza, and you give them the good news. You show them the light. We don't think we need a savior until we are confronted with the fact that we're sinners. And we have mm-hmm. skipped that that role in the church for the last generation. And we have built all kinds of cathedrals in the suburbs. Mm-hmm. Thousands come every weekend. And yet, and yet open demonic influence in this culture is obvious and reigns. I don't know. None of us know if it's too late to, to, to do it another way. We just know that it, doing it the, the way we've been doing it mm-hmm. won't work. They've already rejected that. So yeah. we're going to have to maybe be more confrontational now. Yeah, wow. Well. I am, you know, first time that I was exposed to the, to the demonic in people was mainly, you know, a long time ago at Bob Larson's seminars and then in Africa and other stuff. But what has happened, uh, Steve, in the last, I would say, three years, especially with the rise of TikTok, with the rise of the millennials, uh, you know, exploring spirituality outside of Christianity, exploring the, the new age, exploring all of this stuff. It almost feels like um, the new age, the witchcraft, the occult, the demonic, it's almost like the devil took the mask off mm-hmm. and it's just full-blown our culture whereas before it's just you know prioritized maybe family but just kind of staying away from this radical Christianity, Christian values and everything but now it's full-blown demonic and I think that if the church is not ready to begin to help people to be rescued and sound the alarm and stand for the truth and understand we are in a spiritual warfare and not only spiritual warfare somewhere in Africa, somewhere in Siberia but actually how you portrayed in your book that it's actually it is even though it's a it's a parable your book is more like a parable and a story but behind mm-hmm. that is a truth that this the demonic spirits the kingdom of darkness has hijacked our culture hijacked our government hijacked all of the stuff and is propagating their their stuff i mean even in the movie when you know that that demon uh, would confront that uh, doctor right in front of him and say you know we caused you to do this we are the ones you're pretty much our our pet we're already using you. You don't right. even realize, even though you don't believe in God and you don't believe in demons, you're already doing everything we want you to do. And so that stuff is very scary. And I, I love the fact that these films are coming out. I love the fact that book like yours has come out and it's coming at forefront. And I see, as I was watching the preview yesterday, I saw different pastors who, you know, and pastors sometimes are very hesitant. We like to sugarcoat things. We like to sanitize the Bible and to really just kind of avoid talking about the real and raw and dangerous, I would call them dangerous topics. Um, and I saw pastors beginning to say, hey, so what is, what is this going to do to our church? People are going to start asking questions. You know, we now have to be ready to answer them. We're going to have to help people to, who are demonized, who are coming with these kind of problems. And seeing even what's been happening with a lot of the, some of my friends who are YouTubers who do deliverance and all of this stuff. And I see the hunger that's happening in our culture. So I really, I am excited for what this is going to do. I'm excited for what this is going to do to the kingdom of darkness. And I'm excited for what this is going to do to, to us Christians who are maybe are soft and lukewarm and complacent to shake people up because I think that the book by C.S. Lewis um, it's a little bit more humorous. Yep. I feel like your film, uh, your book and this film that's based on on the book or pretty much it's a prelude to that uh, book um, is going to really shock people into reality and bring them into that. Could you speak into is there going to be another film that's going to come out of after this one? 
Well, audiences like yours, brother, are going to decide that. Okay. Okay. Um, we we do. I mean, I wrote. I actually wrote a sequel book. Okay. As we were beginning filming for this or pre-production for this movie, I wrote a sequel book called *The Nefarious Carol*. I'll give you the rundown of what it's about. I'd love to get your take on it. Okay. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I woke up one morning and I mean, God just gave me this vision for a sequel book that I wasn't even planning to write. I had the chapter outline, what the uh-huh. chapters would be called, what the plot would be. I just woke up and it was all in my head. Okay. And and so um, there is a uh, there's a young woman that is um, uh, she comes from a dysfunctional Christian home. Mm-hmm. She ran into the arms of her boy, her live in boyfriend who turned out to be an abusive drug dealer. And so she runs away from him one night at Christmas time and she has almost no money to her name, doesn't know what she's going to do. And, 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 and the enemy himself reveals himself to her because now that his lieutenant nefarious has convinced him that America is his for the taking, he's actually going to use the United States as the place where the Antichrist will come from. Mm-hmm. But for the ritual of conception for an Antichrist to occur in, in, in the world that I created, he cannot coerce her. He cannot lie to her. He can't deceive her. He can't assault her. He can't rape her. Of her own free will, she has to give herself to the devil. So he reveals himself to her in this motel room at her most desperate moment one evening at Christmas time. And, and he takes the place of a shadow and he speaks to her almost as a father. And, he, and, he, and he, he structures his appeal like her favorite story as a child. She loved Dickens or Christmas Carol. And so similar to that, he goes into her subconscious. He shows her in her past what, what, mis- what, what abuses she suffered, the things that were the traumas that caused her to, be, to become the young dysfunctional woman that she is. Mm-hmm. He goes into her present, what, her present situation and, and why she's desperate and has nowhere else to turn. Mm-hmm. And if she consents, then the third stage is he will let her into his subconscious so he can show her what his vision for the future would be with their son in charge and, 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 and having dominion over mm-hmm. the earth. And then at the wow. end of the film, or I'm sorry, at the end of Freudian slip, mm-hmm. at the end of the book, she has to decide whether to go with the to go with the devil or not. And so we already have plans to turn that into the sequel, oh, wow. uh, depending on how successful this movie is. Mm-hmm. Is the book out already? It is out. It's it was it's it, it came out a couple of years ago. It's called a Nefarious Carol. It's written like a novella, like a Christmas Carol was. Uh-huh. So you can read it on like one two hour plane ride in uh-huh. one sitting. I wrote it to be like one read mm-hmm. that you could absorb mm-hmm. it all. Um, and this book is much more dialogue and relational than the first book, which mm-hmm. is very theological and, mm-hmm. and very polemical. Mm-hmm. This is much more of a, of a conversation between her and the devil. Okay. Okay. Wow. Wow. I'm pretty excited to, uh, to check that out. Um, Steve, thank you so much for um, the work that you did. And thank you so much for writing uh, those stories. Because I know a lot of people, they would rather, they would read something like this versus reading like a you know, Christian book on Antichrist or spiritual warfare. And so stories, mm-hmm. they seem to, they, they, they seem to captivate our culture way better than, than sermons. And so I think that God is using you and I really appreciate you doing that. I'm glad that um, those producers who produced The God's Not Dead and Unplanned as well as picked this, mo- this movie. And I think this is going to be a hit. It's going to be a stone to the Goliath's head. And so I'm really excited for that. Uh, some people might say that, hey, this sounds like this. I mean, I watched the film. It's not a horror film because at first I thought it was no. a Christian horror film. I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to go watch it and stuff. So, yeah. but it's not a horror film. There, there are some tense moments there. There are some strong moments there. Um, it is R-rated. And so what is it? Why is it R-rated if it's not a horror film? Uh, because they are, they were scared to death. Uh, the, the, the atheist at the MPA, uh-huh. the godless MPA was scared to death that, uh, church leaders and pastors like yourself would see the film and say, we've got to get all of our high school age youth groups and their friends. This is the really? outreach move of all time. Take every high school kid from an unbelieving family and have them show up. This is the one movie that we could get them to come to a, to church, to youth group and see this movie. They didn't want that. Really? And so they thought the best way to, to stop that is to slap it with an R rating, thinking that every Christian mom in America would say, my kid can't see it. It's an R rating, even though I promise you, most of them have sadly watched Worse Behind Your Back on Netflix. Yes. A hundred percent. I mean, you, you've seen it, Pastor. Yeah, is yeah. That, is, did you watch an R rated movie by today's standards? No, 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 absolutely not. No. And the scenes were there. The scenes, uh, th- there was one scene that it, it was, it was strong, but it was not. Th- one thing is that this movie is not demonic. This movie is not about a cult. This movie is not about um, like uh, what people would associate as demonic possession and stuff. So it is very strong. It's a very strong message. But I think that 
this is going to draw a lot of Christians who are kind of tired of very soft Christian films and like Good. very Christianese, cheesy Christian films. I mean, Christian films have gotten a lot better over the years. And um, but I'm really excited for what is going to do to people. Yeah. But I just kind of wondered why, the, why it's R rated. Now it makes sense. Pretty much the world. We does don't have not any nudity. Want... There's no, not a drop of blood in the movie. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's one four letter. I think hell is maybe said twice. That's the only four letter yeah. word in the whole movie. It's not an R rated movie. They were just frankly trying to hurt our box office. I don't mm -hmm. know how else to put it yeah. well so uh parents uh, pastors leaders those of you who are watching pretty much now you know what you need to do on april 14th let's rally around let's go pack those theaters uh, bring your family bring your friends bring most importantly bring your co-workers bring your neighbors bring that person who does not want to come to church but who would go and watch a movie because that's a safe place for a lot of non-christians is to go s mm -hmm. see a movie and then after the movie i mean this movie i think one of the producers said this movie will pretty much put in front of them two plus two and everyone will have to, they will have to come to that realization. The movie will not right. tell you what 2 plus 2 is. But each right. person will have to come to that realization. There's only one answer for 2 plus 2, and that is 4. And so, Amen. Um, yeah, I really appreciate you. Um, thank you so much for this movie, this book, and what you're doing for God. You bet, brother. Same to you. Uh, it was an honor to talk to you. Happy to do it anytime. God bless you.